Greetings viewers, we're going vintage. So this is a Schaefer Legacy pen. It is not a terribly old uh, pen when it comes to vintage pens. It is from the uh, mid to late uh, 1990s. One thing that's particularly uh, interesting about this pen, this was made towards the very end of Schaefer's time of making pens in the US. So this is kind of one of the last American made Schaefer pens. It's styled very similar to a very famous Schaefer pen. This is the Schaefer PFM, which stood for pen for men. It is about the same size as this pen uh, and it's styled very similarly in shape, etc. It has a similar but not exact filling mechanism. We'll get into that in a minute. In terms of size comparisons in, in general, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see uh, size wise, uh, in terms of length at least, it's pretty much spot on with these pens. It is a bit thicker and it is certainly heavier. This pen is pretty much all metal, sterling silver, steel, etc. weighs 40 grams. This particular style of the Schaefer Legacy came in a bunch of different finishes and materials was called the Model 840. Eight. Um, it uh, uh, has a has gold. It, like I said, the the material is mostly uh, all sterling silver cap and body, gold plated uh, trim on the cap band. The cap band says um, nine two five sterling silver, Schaefer USA, and then it has a little hallmark for the silver qual uh, uh, for, for the silver. The cap the. Um, the uh, clip is a spring-loaded clip, which works very nicely, and it has the famous Schaefer dot. Um, the bottom of the pen has a, um, a knob for operating the filling mechanism, which we'll get to in a minute. This pen has a very unusual hybrid filling mechanism, which we will, we will definitely talk about. It's a pull to uncap with a clutch ring that has three little nubs to hold the cap on. A smooth black plastic section with a really, really nice 18 karat gold Schaefer inset nib. It says Schaefer's 18K, has the hallmark again, a little registered trademark symbol, and 750. Really, really pretty inset gold nib that writes, uh, writes quite spectacularly as we'll, we'll see later on and that's a look at what the feed looks like um, now let's talk about the filling mechanism for this because it is a little bit different so you can fill this you you can basically have three options for filling this pen you can use Schaefer proprietary cartridges um, which you could use by unscrewing removing this converter and replacing it with a cartridge. You can use a converter as I have here. Or you can use an adapter which looks like this and all this is is a, a sack with a protector around it that's open on one end um, to replace the, um, the, um, the um, converter with and then you can activate a touchdown filling mechanism, which means you don't unscrew it or anything like that. You just open this up. What happens is when you push this down, it's going to compress the bladder inside of here. When it gets to the bottom of the stroke, it will release the air pressure and allow it to fill up. Interestingly enough, what I've found is you could use this special uh, adapter, or if you use an ordinary Schaefer aerometric converter like this one you get the exact same effect because what's going to happen is the piston when you push this in it's going to compress the sac in the aerometric converter and release etc so using a converter like this one really gives you probably the most flexibility in terms of um, in terms of filling so this is a really really interesting um, uh, hybrid convertible filling mechanism that was found on this pen, the Schaefer Legacy pen, and was also found on a subsequent model they made called the Schaefer Legacy 2 pen. So it was really kind of a bridge between the old pens like the um, PFM, which used a snorkel filling mechanism. Prior to the snorkel filling mechanism, Schaefer had the touchdown filling mechanism, but in an era when a lot of people really didn't want to use bottled ink and wanted to use cartridges, this would accommodate that as well. So it's actually quite a, a cool 
filling mechanism and it actually works quite um, quite well so this is this is a like I said a fairly nice pen I like the pattern in the silver it's actually quite nice it is quite a bit of a fingerprint magnet though because it does have some pretty sort of glossy um, you know sections etc you know that's what all sort of silver pens sort of are uh, that, that is uh, sort of a downside of that so but it, um, it it is a very attractive pen it's got some nice heft to it and um, it's very comfortable to hold I absolutely use this post-it all the time personally I find it quite short if you don't post it um, but I think it's very comfortable posted and it posts nicely and posts securely it also has a plastic cap liner that works really really effectively you could cap this and let it sit for quite some time and then it really writes first time every time so it's really really a nice a nice pen very reliable and I like writing with it quite a bit speaking of writing you may be wondering how does this pen write you're gonna find that out right now okay folks what we're writing with here is a Schaefer legacy and technically this is a legacy one like I said they did have a legacy two that followed up this this and this is specifically the model 848 which refers to this uh, silver uh, sterling silver material in this particular finish and this has an 18 carat gold nib and the nib is unlabeled, but I would um, certainly classify this as a fine. And as you might expect with a sort of inset nib like this, there is really nothing much at all in the way of flex, etc. But that's not really uh, this type of pen at all. Um, this is extraordinarily smooth and very, very reliable. and has a really, really nice uh, flow. This pen is extremely pleasurable to write with in pretty much every respect. Um, I like it quite a bit. Um, that's about pretty much all there is to say. It's, it's pretty, it's decently wet actually. Um, for a pen like this. Um, the ink capacity on this pen is is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's outstanding. It's it's pretty pretty good. Um, uh, you know you, you gotta you unlike um, say the PFM when you go to fill this and you actuate the plunger on the end in the PFM or any kind of touchdown filler you just actuate it just the one time. Um, what Schaefer actually says in their documentation for this pen is that you actually do it twice. So you fill, you 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 um, you push down the plunger, um, pull it back out, and do it a second time, and then clamp it down. So that's what I've been doing with this pen, and it seems to get a pretty pretty decent adequate adequate fill at the end of the day it is a sack filled pen it's just a very very fancy way of um of operating the sack filling mechanism but at the end of the day that's that's really what it is so um you do have uh you do have that uh, uh limitation um let's talk about this ink a little bit now shall we so this ink i've actually talked about this ink in a prior video but it's a nice ink so let's talk about it again so this is monteverde Horizon Blue. Um, so, um, this is just a really, really nice, very, very, very deep uh, blue. Um, you do get a little bit of sheen to it, which you can pick up on this uh, Rhodia paper, but let's break out uh, the Tomoe River paper um, to get a better view of uh, what uh, the sheening properties would be. Okay, as we said, this is Monteverde. Horizon Blue. And um, uh, um, this is on Tomoe River paper. And um, one story about this ink, and I've mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning again. There was an old ink 
from in the 90s, back or right around, and interestingly enough, when this pen was made, uh, that uh, Parker made, it was a line, of, a small line of inks, they made about uh, six or eight different colors, called Penman. Uh, the blue ink in that um, color line was called Sapphire, and it was a blue ink with this sort of red sheen to it, and it was very popular, and Parker discontinued it. Haven't made it in quite a few years. What people have said, and I can't really vouch for it one way or the other, I was a user of the Parker Penman Mocha, which was the brown ink. I never actually bothered buying a bottle of the Sapphire. I wish I had stocked up on it. Of course, the bottles of that ink on the uh, secondary market now go for quite quite a lot of money. Um, uh, uh, people say that this ink is the closest thing on the market today to a contemporary ink that looks like Parker Penman Sapphire. I can't say one or the other because, like I said, I wasn't a user of Penman Sapphire, but um, that's the, the, the way the story goes uh, at the moment. Um, so let's um, uh, give this just a few minutes to dry on this uh, on the Tomoe River paper, and we can uh, take a take a look another look at it after the ink has dried for a bit. Okay, now that we've let that dry, you can see there definitely is some very very nice. Uh, uh, in addition to this, really really attractive deep deep. Um, uh, blue color. There is some really, really attractive red sheening on here. So yes, you definitely get the red sheening. Really, really nice effect on the Tomoe River paper. Looks great. Um, really nice ink um, from uh, from Monte from Monteverde. Um, I think that might just about do it for this episode. What do we think? So, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did. Please, please subscribe. Please keep the thumbs up coming, etc., etc., etc. And hey, leave a comment. They're always welcome. And oh, as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye bye.